Welcome back everyone. So I've made a few videos about the questions you would get as a Microsoft 365 engineer when you go for your interview. And I've gone back and forth just thinking about the questions and the answers that I've spoken about in my videos. And I thought to myself, you know what? I haven't actually made a video about the roles or the responsibilities you would have once you become a Microsoft 365 engineer or an engineer with some Microsoft 365 responsibilities. So let's talk about that today. Let's talk about the responsibilities you would have as a Microsoft 365 engineer or as a system engineer that is expected to do Microsoft 365 activities. Before we get started, if you do like these videos and if you do like cloud videos and tech videos and just general sort of fun around tech and around home IT and cloud IT, etc. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and drop a comment in the section below if you want to hear anything specific. So let's go through some of the responsibilities. So the first and foremost, most important responsibility as a Microsoft 365 engineer is creating users. Well, not really, it might not be the most important thing, but it's one of the things that you're going to be doing a lot of. So creating users, being able to create users in Microsoft 365 and assigning licenses to them and creating them with certain attributes and properties and descriptions and knowing where certain attributes come from, whether they come from on-premises, whether they come from cloud only. That is one of the responsibilities, so creating users, nice and easy one. I don't think many people are gonna struggle doing that. A lot of people do it themselves and they're not even IT or they're not even tech savvy. So I think that one's nice and easy. Removing users, yes, it's very easy. A lot of people can remove users, I have no doubt. But what's important is to understand what happens to users when they get removed. So I'd expect a system engineer to sort of understand, you know, what's going to happen once you remove a license from a user or once you delete a user's account in Microsoft 365. I want to know that my engineers understand that there is a period where you can restore them and after that you really can't and that we need to think about things like you know the mail in their mailbox or their data in their OneDrive before we delete them. Creating mailboxes, distribution list, all that sort of thing. So mailboxes, distribution list, Office 365 groups, security groups, all those sort of groups and user administration type stuff. I really expect the engineers to be able to do that without even asking questions, without even having to Google. If they do have to Google, it's fine. But I do expect my engineers to understand that, like that should be bread and butter. Investigating activity. So this comes up surprisingly a lot. Um, being in the roles I've been in in the past 10 years or so, and if you're interested in hearing about that, hit the video card above. All the type of roles that I've had, it really sort of comes up a lot where, you know, my boss or maybe a customer or something like that will come to me and they'll say, can we investigate a certain user's activity? So they wanna be able to see if a user really did receive an email or maybe there is a bit of a legal matter that needs to be addressed and we need to find if a user actually sent a certain email or if it was really them acting in their inbox and not someone else that has access to their mailbox. We need to understand that type of thing. So that comes up a lot. So I do expect engineers will understand how to go through the audit activity and see what's going on or what's really happened with a user. Configuring sharing. So this is going to happen a lot these days. Microsoft 365 gives so much option to their users to sort of be able to share things externally and internally and OneDrive in Teams, in SharePoint, all of it. So it really helps if our engineers understand you know, all the different types of sharing because you'll be asked to do things like configure sharing between two different companies or allow a certain user to share something or maybe restrict someone from sharing to a certain domain, whitelisting the domain for sharing or blacklisting the domain for sharing. Those are the type of things that come up a lot. Security is a big one and there's probably some sub points as well. So security, the main thing that you're going to be asked a lot of in Microsoft 365 is multi-factor authentication. There is a lot going on in that sort of security space and we expect all our engineers to understand security when it comes to 365. So we need all our engineers to understand multi-factor authentication, whether it comes to the free Microsoft 365 authentication or whether you're using conditional access, you're gonna be asked to do a lot of this type of thing. So maybe one of the things that might come up is you'll be expected to apply multi-factor authentication, but only when a user is coming from a certain IP or don't apply conditional access when a certain user is coming from a certain IP. That's the type of thing that we'll get asked a lot of and we really expect the engineers to understand this. This is very simple once you've been in 365 for a few years. 
Another point around security is external and internal sharing. There's multiple different types of sharing you can fig configure in Microsoft 365 and it's important that the engineer understands that. You'll be asked a lot, so your customers will come to you, they'll say, I want to share between this company and this company, or I want to share to this user in particular, or a lot of the time you'll get a user saying, I'm trying to share something and it's not working. You'll be expected to be able to troubleshoot that sort of thing and understand why or where you need to make changes to allow that sharing or disallow that sharing. Permissions. So a Microsoft 365 engineer, usually that's not a first level role. It's usually like, you know, maybe a third or second level type of role. So you usually have a first level service desk or something like that. A lot of the time the service desk is going to need access, but we don't want to give them global admin access, which is like the equivalent of you know, godlike access in Microsoft 365. So what we do need to do is we, we need to assign them certain permissions. So maybe the user admin role or maybe the security reader role or something like that. We need the engineers to understand that there is a difference and that they are going to be expected to be able to understand all those roles and what they should give a certain user, what they should give or what they should give a certain group of users. Licensing. As an engineer, you're going to be asked about licensing in 365 a lot and look, it is complicated and Microsoft don't do a great job in sort of simplifying it and it changes all the time. So you need to stay on top of it, but I wouldn't say you need to understand the ins and outs of licensing. What you need to more understand of is how to assign a license to a user, how to remove a license from a user, what happens when you remove the license from a user, and maybe what type of licenses you have available in your specific directory. So understanding all the licenses is probably too big of a requirement. It's probably better if you just understand what your own organization has. So for example, you'll get asked to create a user with only Exchange. So you need to sort of understand which one of your licensing that's available in your tenant has only Exchange because you don't want to give people licenses for applications they don't need because then your organization is just paying for things that's not really required. Service improvement. So Microsoft 365 is always releasing new things, always releasing new things. So the way that I stay on top of it is I subscribe to the RSS feeds from Microsoft 365 blogs and I stay, I stay sort of valid with my understanding of Microsoft 365 features. So I'm always looking up the Microsoft official pages to look at the new roles and features that might come around. And I sort of just try and think about how I can apply them to my customers or to my users and help them get a better service from Microsoft 365. So it's important we stay on top of these things because otherwise they get released and you don't end up using them and then you sort of start to fall behind. So I think the better way to sort of um, roll out new features to your users is to really understand them yourself first and allow people to trial them and see if they're fit for purpose or fit for your business. So that's the type of thing I like my engineers to understand. I like them to understand that Microsoft 365 is ever revolving and that you may need to actually push features out to users and speak to users about using certain features or making certain changes into the user behavior. The last one is troubleshooting. So you're gonna to have to troubleshoot anything that you support in a sort of IT role. Microsoft 365 is no different. Sometimes you're gonna to have to troubleshoot why something's not working, why mail isn't flowing, why a user is not unable to share, why a user cannot log in, why a user is getting multi-factor authentication in multiple scenarios that they shouldn't. You need to be able to troubleshoot that sort of thing. So that's the type of thing that we would really lean on our engineers for because those are the people that understand the environment the best, the ones that are in there always troubleshooting, making changes, rolling out new features, speaking to users, understanding user behavior. I'll keep this one nice and short. Thanks for watching today. If you do want to hear anything specific, drop a comment in the section below. Otherwise, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time.